about 400 watt hour plus 800 watt hour combined we have about 1200 watt hour worth of battery power here um, with a 600 watt inverter um, now what is this this is the new ac60 uh, solar generator from blue eddy with their expandable battery system the b80 now this is a brand new product i thought let's try this out let's see what can something like this actually do let's like kind of deep dive um, into this unit one thing that stood out to me right away is how we have these two rather large um, AC plugs and they have ground plugs on them. And now a lot of um, solar generators have like ground plugs, but they're not real, they're fake. But this one has ground plugs here and in the back here, it actually has an input for a ground. So that's kind of interesting. It's making me think that that would enable me to charge my EV with this, where you need a ground plug. Same thing with AC. Um, I must say everything is rather rugged, like good flaps, a lot of like weatherproofing. On this side here, this is where we have the input to expand it with the other batteries. And you can see two here because you can expand up to two batteries. And in the back here, solar inputs. When they are not connected, this guy um, you know, has a screen and it will show us the charge of this unit right here, this is 98%. Um, and here, of course, we have screen, we have inverter, we have battery, we have solar charge control in this unit. Now this guy on top, you know, has more battery power in it and also solar charge controller, I believe, because you can charge solar directly through here or directly through here. Now you can use this battery um, as well to charge things up. However, only through DC because there's no inverter in here, right? So you can plug in, you know, USB-C, USB-A um, and there's the 12 volt cigarette lighter here. So two separate systems. However, if we combine the two, let's shut this off. If we connect the two together, clicks in nicely. Um, now this one senses the charge of this battery and will give us a combined charge. Now it's an 88% charge. Um, and now we can, <laughs> if we charge the system up, it will distribute the charge among the two batteries. Let's try using an induction cooktop and boiling some water. Something useful in an emergency or going camping or whatever. And right away though, when you're using an induction cooktop, you need to lower the, the heat. You can't put it on full blast, it's gonna overpower it. So first of all, let's make sure we actually have our um, power lifting on. Power lifting, okay, what's that? So this has a 600 watt inverter, something like that. That means it can normally draw something that draws 600 watts, right? Now this has a setting in the app that you can turn on power lifting and that enables it, or should enable it to, to you know, use an appliance that normally draws more than 600 watts. And then I think the cap is like 1200 watts. So I'm gonna go down to uh, two. And let's pour two cups of water in our kettle. Uh, let's take a timer. Let's see how long would it actually take to heat up two cups of water uh, with an induction cooktop using this setup. Okay, we're getting some steam now, 210 degrees. So about six, seven minutes to boil two cups of water. So we only used about 72 watts boiling two cups of water using a kettle. Now if we had used a pot, a wider pot, which I did a test earlier, this is uh, going on 18 minutes now. So we used about 324 watt hours. Took a lot longer, not as efficient much more efficient, so not bad, 72 watts. So even with just the one unit, uh, you would be uh, fine boiling a whole bunch of water. Let's try out my window AC. So in the past, when I have um, plugged this into other solar generators that have a ground, uh, it hasn't actually worked because the compressor won't turn on. So let's see with this ground system here. Okay, we got the fan going right now. Okay, just shut off. So currently we're not really drawing anything. We're only drawing 59 watts. Every time I bring it down to a little bit lower temperature, it shuts off. I think all we're getting is the fan. We're not getting the compressor. Now to go on the AC. I wonder if I need um, some sort of ground connection here. If I do that though, if you have a ground connection, 
does that mean that it's going to be connected? It's not going to be portable then, right? It was interesting, it was actually the AC that shut off. There wasn't an overload within this system. It was the unit over there that shut off. Another useful thing to plug in if it's cold is a small heater. Um, let's try this guy. So we're drawing 588, 587. Of course, something like this is pretty straightforward. So what, like 550 watt per hour of running your heater. So if it's a cold night, you know, in one hour you'll have drawn, you know, 550 watt hours. If you have these charged up, you'll be able to run this heater for what? two, three hours, two and a half hours, depending on your setting and how often it goes on and how cold it is. Now, another option, of course, if you're cold, that uses less power than a heater, is like an electric blanket. I happen to have one. Now, something like this is substantially more efficient and we're using the cigarette lighter here, which means we can actually plug it into either unit. Let's plug it in this guy turn on our DC so it doesn't show any output right now let's plug it into this guy instead see now it's actually showing the output if we're using the blanket on here it won't show here what the output is so 70 on high 50 on medium and about 30 on low an electric blanket is obviously a lot more efficient. It's on you. It uses a lot less power than a heater. So what, like 50, 60, 70 watt compared to like 500 watt. Um, however, if you have this on you the whole night, so let's say you're using 50 watt for what, a six, seven hour night, that's still 300 watt hours that you're using depleting here. Um, so still a substantial amount that you will draw out of the battery. Okay, what if you want to bring something like this to a tailgating party? You want to use a blender to make fun drinks or something. So let's try out our blender here. I'm going to make a smoothie. We'll see if it will be able to handle it. So we'll start on the one first. Okay, no issue there. Let's go our my green smoothie that I normally do. So no issues. So this was drawing about 530, 40 watts. When you think about it, it only does that for such a short period of time, right? Like 30 seconds. So this went down from 89 to 88%. So in reality, we used very little power um, making a smoothie using the blender. Okay, if you want to do tailgating party, um, if you want to bring a slow cooker, like heat up some chili or something like that, you could certainly do that too. A slow cooker doesn't really use a whole lot of power, right? Um, like maybe 250 watts per hour um, but the thing is when you're cooking with the slow cooker you use it for a long period of time so you use it for four or six or eight hours so in that case you would use up this system if you were to actually use it to cook something with over a long period of time um, on the other hand if you're using it to keep something warm if you've already cooked your food and you're you know serving something out of it um, then you know that wouldn't be an issue I mean, the size of this is its quite nice, isn't it? So in terms of solar, uh, max is 28 volt, 200 watts. Um, so as long as you have a panel that fits those descriptions, you can use. So this is a 200 watt panel. 41 watts coming in. So not a whole lot. Okay, so since they're connected, we can see the solar coming in um, here as well. Now what if we disconnect these two? Are we going to be able to see solar coming in on this unit still? Okay, now this is standalone. I can't see any of the solar coming into this unit. I mean, there is an input here. It's not registered on the app too. So I guess you need the second, you need the main unit in order for the app to register anything. Um, however, since there's an input here, it should be able to charge it up. Um, you just can't see any evidence of it. So we're now at 20% here now. So one of them, oh, says 7% and the other one says 27%. So ideally, you know, not great that the one is down to 7%. So let's charge them up. So standard mode, bringing in 493. Let's go turbo, another 100 watts. I mean, coming in about 600 watts in turbo. As you can, you can hear the fan going a little bit. There's another charging mode that's silent. You can hear the quieter, much quieter. 
and now it's only bringing in 157 watts. Okay, so I guess, yeah, to compensate for that, so we're, it's going to be slower, less noisy. And uh, yeah, let's go back to normal, huh? Standard. So charging these both from a 20% level took about two hours. You know what happened last night? So I'm in the middle of working on this video and then we actually had a power outage starting at like 10 o'clock last night. Um, so I brought this inside the house and I connected this to one of our fridge units. We have like a portable fridge where we have a lot of extra food or it's like a freezer unit actually. Um, so I had this, these two guys power that unit throughout the night. Uh, which, you know, was fine. It didn't actually use that much power at all. I think that f that fridge freezer unit uses about 50, 60 watts per hour. Um, so we were just, we were fine. It saved that food in that fridge. But a main large fridge, which I think would be the concern for a lot of people, if you get something like this, you want to make sure that in an emergency, in a power outage, that you can power certain things, like you can power your fridge or your freezer. Uh, so that your food doesn't spoil, that's kind of a big deal. So could you use something like this for that? Yes, it's just a matter of how long, right? Um, and how much of your fridge draws. My fridge uses about 100 watts per hour over a 24 hour period of time. It's not linear though, it goes up and down, so sometimes it uses a lot more. So over a long period of time it uses, you know, about 100 watts per hour. Um, but it's hard to say exactly, but even if it used 300 watts per hour, um, you can still get this to work for a couple of hours um, and most power outages are not that long anyway. I was thinking about like how useful is this extra battery and if you're actually planning on using the system in a real way it is very useful. 400 watt hours in terms of a battery for the main unit is a little bit on the low side but I mean if you're going to go out like doing minimal camping where you want to use it to charge your electronics, your laptop, your phone, your camera batteries, those kinds of things, then it's plenty of power, right? Even for some low level cooking, using like an electric cooker or using the heating blanket a little bit, you'll be fine with Sky. Now, if you actually wanted to use it a little bit more substantially, if you wanted to use an induction cooktop or a heater or um, anything for more of a prolonged period of time, right? then the extra battery is going to help out a lot. Of course, if you have solar set up and there's an amount of solar coming in, um, you're gonna be fine either way, right? Because you're going to be replenishing what you are using. So, nifty little system. I'm kind of liking it. I like the rugged design. Make sure to check out the link in the description below um, for more information. If you wanna go and check this out, this blue eddy, AC60 and B80. <laughs> um, yeah, this was really fun. I enjoyed uh, looking into this guy. Uh, so thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I'll see you soon.